Ah, oh, hello again, everyone. Last time, we reached the real turning point in the ministry of Jesus. It's only when his disciples had grasped who he really is, the long-awaited Messiah, that he's able to teach them what he's come to do, to suffer, die, and rise on the third day. Jesus knew that in taking the sins of the whole world upon himself and suffering God's judgment on them, his death would enable God's forgiveness to flow out to all those who trust in his sacrifice and who cry out to God for his mercy and forgiveness. And nothing was to be allowed to stand in the way of that. So how was Jesus to be strengthened to face the horrific ordeal ahead? Ah, let's get over there right now and find out. Eight days later, Jesus took three of his disciples, Peter, James and John, up a high mountain, probably Mount Tabor, right here, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. So, before his frightful suffering, rejection and death in Jerusalem, the disciples were granted a glimpse of the glory which Jesus had left behind to become man. And also a glimpse of eternity, because Moses and Elijah were seen with him. Moses had been dead for 1250 years and Elijah for 900. And yet here they were, talking with Jesus about the way he would fulfill God's purpose by dying in Jerusalem. The magnificent Franciscan Basilica on the summit is a worthy memorial to this astounding event, which was intended to strengthen Jesus for the dreadful ordeal ahead. Well, the three disciples present could never forget it. A bright cloud, radiant with the glory of God, had overshadowed them. And as Moses and Elijah disappeared from the scene, God's voice was heard. This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. You know, in scripture, the glory of God's very presence is always depicted by a shining cloud. We remember how, about 1400 years earlier, when Moses led God's people out of slavery, God went before them in a shining cloud, a pillar of cloud. 500 years later, when David's son Solomon had dedicated the original temple, we're told that the cloud filled the temple of the Lord. The priests couldn't perform their service because of the cloud, because the glory of the Lord filled his temple. And indeed, later, when the disciples were to witness the return of Jesus to his Father in heaven, we're told a cloud took him out of their sight. There's that cloud once again. In other words, Jesus is being received back into the very glory and presence of his Father in heaven. It's wonderful. And so here, on this mountain, where the glory of God shone forth from Jesus like the very sun itself, the scene is being set for the final conflict. So join me later as the events boil to their inexorable climax in Jerusalem. We'll meet there next time. Mm -hmm.